everyone, it's Sarah, and welcome to my crochet channel. Today's video, I'm going to show you how to make this super sweet and easy snowman bandana for your dog or cat, or any pet for that matter. The pattern is written in two sizes. We have the extra small, which fits about an 8 to 10 inch neck, and then we have a small that fits about 11 to 12 inch neck. But the beauty of this style of bandana for your pet is you can make it as small or as big as you would like. And I'll explain that as we get a little farther on in the video. This is a free crochet pattern on my blog and you can find that blog link down in the notes underneath the video. To make your pet a snowman bandana, you're going to need some yarn. And we're using worsted weight or medium weight number four yarn. This one here that's all sparkly, the white and the pink are I Love This Yarn, and the silver is Karen Party. And these are sparkly yarns. You can find those at most of your craft stores. Of course, the I Love This Yarn is only at Hobby Lobby. For today's demonstration, I'm just using regular worsted weight number four yarns without any sparkle. I'm just using white, this powder blue, and this light green for the snowman and his little hat portion of our bandana. And then you're also going to need a little bit of orange and black. And that's just for the nose, the eyes, and the silly smile. These are all, like I said, medium weight, worsted weight, number four yarns. All of these here are Red Heart Super Saver. We're going to be stitching today with our H hook. The H hook is a 5.0 millimeter crochet hook. You're going to need a needle for weaving in ends, and you'll also need it for embroidering on the face and sewing on that nose. And then, of course, the last thing you need is your pair of scissors. It is a good idea to measure your dog or cat or pet's neck so you know how wide to make your bandana. The bandana is made starting at the bottom and so you can increase the white portion for as wide as you want it. And then we do ties and so you do have a little bit of play in size. And it really also depends on if you like a big bandana or a small one on your dog. So just keep that in mind as we work. We're going to begin with our slip knot and we're going to chain four. And of course, I'm starting with my white for my snowman. <clears throat> Here's our chain four. We're going to place four double crochets in this fourth chain, and the first three chains will count as one double crochet. So yarn over go in the chain, pull up a loop, yarn over, go through the first two, yarn over, and go through the second two. And now we need to do that two more times. Actually, we need to do it one more time because we need four double crochets plus our chain three so that we have five double crochets. So just to be clear, we chained four and we placed four double crochets in the fourth chain from the hook, which gives us five because our chain three counts as our first double crochet. All right, let's chain three and turn. Now for row two, our chain three counts as our first double crochet and we're going to double crochet in that first stitch. Then we'll double crochet in the next three, one, two, and three. Then we'll place two double crochets in that last stitch. And of course, that last stitch was our chain three from the first row. I'm going to go ahead and chain three and turn. And before I turn, you'll notice we went from five double crochets to seven because our chain three counted as our first and then we double crocheted in that first stitch. Then we double crocheted in the next three and then we put two double crochets in the last. And this is the way the pattern will work. 
At the beginning and end of each row, we're going to have two double crochets. We turned, we chained three, and I'm going to put a double crochet right in that first stitch. That's an increase. Then I'll stitch in each double crochet across. Then in this last stitch, we'll stitch two double crochets. One and two. I'm going to go ahead and chain my three. And you can see that on the first row we had five, then we had seven, and now we have nine because we increased by one at the beginning and one at the end of this row. And that's how you adjust the size. You're going to continue to do this, increasing at the beginning and at the end, until it's the size that you want. Now for the extra small size, we're going to repeat this three more times. And for the, uh, the small size, we'll repeat it five more times. Now it's up to you how many times you want to repeat it. If you're making this for a really tiny dog, you may not want to repeat but for one or two more rows. All right, so let's go ahead and do row four. Our chain three counts as our first double crochet, and then we're going to double crochet in the same stitch. There's our first increase. We'll double crochet in each stitch across. And then we'll stitch two double crochets in the last stitch. There's our next increase. So we're increasing at the beginning and the end of each row. I'm going to put my chain three. And your chain three on this white portion that we're doing, the snowman face, the chain three will always count as a double crochet. All right. So if I'm making the extra small size, I'm going to do two more rows just like this, increasing at the beginning and end. If I'm doing the small size, I'm, I'm going to have to do four more rows, or as many rows as needed for the size that I'm making. If you're doing for a much larger dog, you can continue for as many rows as you want for the size of your dog. Like I said, if you're doing it really small, this may be all the bigger that you want to do, and then add the, the hat portion. So once you get your bandana the size that you want for the white portion, let me grab the original out here so you can see what I'm talking about. You'll increase until it's the size that you want for your white portion. All right. I'm going to do the next row. One double crochet in the same stitch as my chain three, and then one double crochet in each stitch across. I'm going to make the extra small size, and so I need to do two more rows. I'm to the last stitch. So I'm going to place two double crochets. So I've completed that sixth row because I'm doing the extra small size. And on the sixth row, you'll have 15 stitches. Five, seven, nine, 11, 13, and then 15 stitches. See, it goes up by two because you're increasing at the beginning and the end of every row and that's how we keep that V shape. Now remember you're going to need to continue to increase one at the beginning and one at the end if you're making it even bigger. 
for a bigger dog or a bigger cat, you'll continue to increase until it's the size that you would like it to be. Once you've reached the amount of rows that you need, at the end of the last row, which is my sixth row, I'm only going to chain one. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do a trim around the edge of our bandana. So we're going to work down here to the point and then we'll work right back up. And the best way to do this is to work in the stitches, not the holes. You can see I'm going through the end of the row through the stitches and I'm stitching single crochets. And this is where you just have to sort of eyeball it. There isn't a set number. Just try to go through stitches. If you go in the holes, you'll have big gaping holes and it won't look as neat. And there might be times where you may have to go in a hole. But for the most part, try to go around the stitch on the end. We're going to work our way down to the corner or to the point of our bandana. Whoops. <laughs> there we go. And there I had to go in a little bit of a hole. And when we get to the point, we'll go right in that hole and we're going to stitch three single crochets. And this will just help the corner lay nice by stitching the three single crochets right in that hole. And then we're just going to work our way right back up the side of the bandana, stitching single crochets on the ends of the rows, working back up to the top. As you can see, I have single crochet down to the corner. I put three single crochets in the corner and then I single crocheted up the side of my bandana. And I'm going to bring in my color two. And chain three. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to stitch one double crochet in each of the double crochets across. And this is just the hat band. And if you'll notice, I'm stitching over those tails of yarn. And I like to do that if I can. And then I'll come back in and weave it in more later. If you don't prefer to stitch over it, you don't have to. When it comes to weaving in ends, a lot of it really is just preference and how you like to do it. There are things that I do that work for me that may not work for you. All right, one double crochet in each of the double crochets across. All right, now, our chain three here counted is our first double crochet. And when you get to the end, you'll notice that your last row here will be that edge where we stitch that single crochet row. And make sure that you put one single crochet in the end, or one double crochet, excuse me, double, in the end of that single crochet, or you'll have a little bit of a gap there on your end. And so what happens is you'll have one extra because your chain three counts here and then one extra on the end. And so if you ended with 15, you'll now have 17 double crochets across. And whatever, um, you know, you ended on, make sure you've got your chain three and your last double crochet in that last stitch. All right, so the way this works is we're going to go ahead and cut our blue because we're done with that for now. And we're going to join in our next color. Snug that down. And we're going to start by making the first tie first. 
And so I'm making the extra small, so I'm going to chain 20. If you're making the small, you'll chain 25. And of course, you can chain more if you want, if you want longer ties. I keep mine relatively short, and I tie just um, like a square knot in it once it's set, and then I just slide it on their head. That way I'm not fussing with having to tie it every time. I've got five here, so I need to do 15 more. Another reason that I keep my ties relatively short is I don't want them getting caught in their toenails or their teeth. All right, so once you've chained your tie as long as you would like it, we're going to begin by slip stitching in the second chain from the hook. And a slip stitch is you just go in, pull up a loop, and then pull that loop through the loop that's already on your hook. So we're going to slip stitch back to the bandana. Once you've slip stitched back down your tie to the bandana, we're going to single crochet in that first double crochet, and then we'll single crochet in each of those double crochets working across the top of our bandana. We got two more. There's one and two. And now what we're going to do is we're going to do the tie on this side exactly the same length we did on this side. So since I did 20, I'm going to chain 20 again. And once you have chained as many as needed for your second tie. Oops, <laughs> we're not doing double crochets. We're going to begin by single crocheting in the second chain and single crochet in each chain across back to the bandana. One single crochet in each chain. I single crocheted in each of the chains on that side of my tie. Now I'm going to single crochet in each of the single crochets working across the top of the bandana. Whoops, <laughs> there we go. One single crochet in each single crochet working across the top of the bandana. Once you've single crocheted across the top of your bandana, it brings us back to that other tie. And we're going to slip stitch in each of the slip stitches on that tie. One slip stitch in each slip stitch. Once you've slip stitched in each slip stitch of that second tie, we're going to go ahead and cut our yarn and tie off. Now we'll need to take a couple minutes and weave in some of these ends, but the next thing that we need to do is make the nose, the face, and the pom-pom. Let's make our snowman a nose. We're going to begin like we did at the beginning of our bandana and make a slip knot and chain four. Then we're going to place only two double crochets 
in the fourth chain. And of course, I'm using orange yarn. We're going to chain one and turn, and then we're just going to place a slip stitch in the top of those three stitches. The two double crochets and then the chain three that counted as a double crochet. That's the nose. We're going to cut off, leaving a long piece of yarn so we can sew it onto our snowman. All right, now I like to begin with the tail of yarn that's at the point of our little carrot nose. And of course, you can set it however you want to. This one I've got it out a ways, but it's up to you. I'm going to put this one like right in the center since it's a little bit smaller bandana. And we're just going to go down in and come back up. Okay, and then we'll take the other end and I'll go down in and just sew across the top. And remember, it needs to stretch a little bit, not a lot, like a hat or something, but it is going to be worn by a dog who move around a lot or a cat who moves around a lot. So you need to make sure you give it just a little bit of stretchiness. In other words, don't sew it on so tightly it can't move just a little. All right, pull that string out of there. I'm going to go down this way. And then I'm going to come back up over here and do the same thing on this side. So that's down. Then I'll turn it over. I'll tie it in a couple of knots. I usually do three. And then I'll just clip it. Now, I know that tying knots in crochet is a no-no. But when it comes to something like this, especially if it's going to be on a dog or an animal, I want to make sure it's going to stay put. All right, let's do the face. And then, I'll, and then lastly, I'll show you how to do the tiny little pom-pom. All right, so... I cut off a piece of black yarn. It's about 24 inches, maybe 18 inches. It doesn't take very much. And I'm going to put the smile on first. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here. And when you're embroidering on a face, make sure you go through stitches and not the holes. It's just going to help it hold better. And I really, I just sort of freehand where I want to go. Make it come up just a little more. And then I'm going to put the end of his smile on. You don't have to. The other one doesn't have one. It's just if you want to add a little extra. All right. And then I'll do the eyes. And I like to kind of make them go to a slant. Again, going through stitches, not holes. It's just going to hold better. And I'll just go through a stitch up here. And I like to kind of go next to it when I'm doing these eyes. Okay, and then this one's going to come up just a little bit higher. And there's the little snowman face. Now, if you want it a little bit thicker, you can go back over all of this a second time with your black yarn. So now our snowman has a little face, and he needs a little pom-pom for his hat. To make the little pom-pom, I cut a piece of yarn that's about 12 inches long. I'm just going to set it down there. Then I'm going to take one strand of each of the two colors that are in his little hat. I'm going to take my three fingers and I'm going to wrap it loosely about 10, 12, 15 times around. It doesn't matter how thick you want it. 
cut that and I try to keep the ends at the bottom. I'm going to lay that right on that string. All right. Kind of give it a good tight, hold it with my nail and tie it again, and then tie it three times. All right, now, the way I trim this is I look at the top first and I cut those loops. I think I got them all. And then I'll push it forward with my hand. And then I'll just cut it just like this. And then I'll floof it out and look at it. And if I see any that are just sticking out a little bit crazy or I don't like them, I'll just clip them off just like that. And then I'll take these two strings and you have to decide how far in. You can put it right in the center. You can put, I like them over to the side just because I've kind of got the face going that direction. And so what I'll do is I'll go through between the rows and pull the one string to the back. Then I'll go down about two stitches and do the same thing. And tie it on tightly with three knots. Now I know we did knots for the pom-pom. We did knots for the nose and for the face when we brought it back to the back and we knotted it together. If you want to add just a dot of fray check or fabric glue to hold those, you certainly can. I don't recommend using hot glue just because hot glue is a little sticky and gummy and it can get caught in dog hair. All right, so there is our snowman. All right, now the way we tie the ties, what I do is I put it on my dog and I tie the tie and you'll notice these ties are nice and short because I do not like for it to get caught in their toenails or their teeth. They're not meant to tie a bow. They're just meant to tie like a little square knot. And then you can just slide it right on your dog's neck or your cat or animal anytime you want them to wear the bandana. This way you're not having to tie it every single time. All right, so here's the extra small one. And here's the small one. This one's for Rosie, and this one is for Maximo. <laughs>